My mother gave me a name, Bertie McGriff. In the business world, we cut it short, and I'm Bert McGriff. I grew up on a farm. My dad was tenant farmer. He used to, we'd go to the field and work, and then Mom would go home and cook lunch. Well, we'd go in to eat. Bertie would get the brush broom and sweep the backyards. <laughs> He didn't, he didn't like nothing to be messy, you know. We played together. Oh yeah, my uncle would come up and we would play uh, police and enemies out in the cane field. <laughs> and we just played. We've, we've kidded and gone on and everything, but he was, he was much, uh, he's 12 years older than me and so, He's always been good to me. I worked on the farm till I was 18 years old. Turn, the week I turned 18, I got drafted to the military. I stayed in the Army three years, then come home, got a job at a gas station. When he came home from service, we all went down to Birmingham to meet him to get off of the plane. I guess that's about 12 of them. And uh, so they put us behind this railing. You do not go till they all get off of that plane. Well, I saw when Bertis got off, I scooted under the thing and I went and met him halfway up till uh, where well, we were supposed to be behind this thing. I was working at this gas station. There's seven of us working there. They were service stations back in those days. You wash cars, grease cars, put tires on cars. You did everything. It wasn't just a gas station back then, it was a service station. I worked there about a year. Shell Oil come to town. Two men watched him across the street, followed him home for after a couple of days after they had observed that he was offering the best service of the, and hustle of all the folks and uh, offered him an opportunity to sell them an a abandoned shell service station. And I told them I didn't have any money and they said, well, thousand dollars, we'll get you in bed. Next morning, my dad gets up and goes to town. Didn't tell me anything what he's gonna do but he borrowed me a thousand dollars. So that's the way I started McGriff, what is named today, McGriff Tire Company. He just was a go-getter. He was a gambler. He was not afraid. Dad was never afraid to take the risk. He, he would just do it and somehow it would work out. Dad, as a parent, was, um, he, he was the fun dad. Mom was the disciplinary, and Dad just had to, he was more the type that if you messed up, you got the long talk, the disappointing look. He, he was just a very steady, easy-going dad. My dad was a fair dad, firm dad, loving dad. Uh, but uh, he, he started us in business at an early age. I mean, I started when I was 12 years old, working in a retreat plant. A hard worker. He was, dad, dad worked all the time. I mean, mother would always talk about, you know, he, he was a very good provider. He was home on weekends, of course, but he, he worked from dawn till dark and would come in and get us up in the, 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 at night when he got home. And then mom would have to get us put back to bed. And, but, as far as a loving, I mean, loving family relationship. Our, our dad, I know, knows how much we love him, but uh, can never repay him or thank him enough for what he has given us an opportunity. He never get, gave us anything for us as a silver spoon or bought us a lot of toy, big toys or anything, but he gave us opportunities to uh, succeed.
Customer service is the most important thing that McGriff offers. Our, our owner and founder has said many, many times, everybody can sell a tire, everybody's got a product. The service is where we separate ourselves from the competitors. I think our culture is about family, and that doesn't mean my family, it means the entire McGriff Tire Company. Uh, we, we try to take care of our people, but we want our people to take care of our customer because our customer is our boss. And uh, if we are honest with our customer, take care of them, do what's right, and uh, we feel like we will receive the benefits in the, re in the return. So years ago, um, a group of individuals, and he is one of the few that are still living, um, this flying 50, 50 men got together and pulled their own money to go to New York and recruit industry for Coleman. He did not want his children or other children to have to move up north and work, as all his friends were having to do when he got out of the service. I mean, he has, he's been successful in many, many ways, but that to bring for the community and not just himself, I think is, I just think all, all those men, it was just remarkable what they did to recruit. He has always looked beyond himself and beyond his own family. He's looked at his community as a whole. But he was always behind the scenes trying to make Coleman a, a better community, like developing the golf course. Um, it was in the 1980s, interest rates were in the 20%, and he said, Coleman needs a club, a country club. They need a place for industry and business people to go and um, network and make decisions and learn about one another, and he took his money and did that. The thing that I, I believe I would want people to remember about Mr. Burt the most is, is that he cares. Um, it's not just a business decision. You're not just a business decision to him. He cares about you. He cares about your family. He cares about you, you as an individual. He loves, I mean, we have extended family members that are, aren't truly blood related that he, he loves. To me, that's what he would want to be known for, is the, the for the legacy of, of just being a kind person. He's always been easygoing with most everybody, and if he could help somebody, he always would do that. So I learned from him that people are everything. It's your relationships and those things you learn in life. Most everybody liked him, I reckon. I never did hear anybody fussing at him or anything about him. He's a good person. He gives to people and all. One thing, I'd say let's go fishing. <laughs> thank you. I mean, what a life he, an opportunity he gave all of us. It's just, thank you for teaching us the values that he did. We didn't always follow them, maybe not always, but um, I just appreciate growing up in a home that I did. I, I really appreciate it and love him dearly. Just to know I love him. Dad, I love you. Dad um, has uh, a big foot and a uh, 14 shoe. And I've heard many times people talk about uh, big shoes to fill. We definitely have big shoes to fill in Fallen Dad's legacy. You know, it's been a, a, a blessing for me just to be able to, uh, been able to, uh, uh, my dad pitching the football to me early in life of run, being able to help run the company. Uh, you know, I never felt like it was all about one big eye. I always felt like it was a team effort. We worked together uh, as we still even do today. Uh, he gave me the tools and opportunities. Uh, he's given me things that allowed me to do things, uh, whether it's serving the chamber office or the 
Trucking Association office or uh, even uh, National Tire Dealers Association uh, to kind of be in part, part of our industry and give back. And uh, he's, uh, it's kind of a, it has been a blessing that I've had an opportunity that uh, uh, maybe a lot of folks wouldn't have had, but uh, it's, it's a great honor to have been his son and uh, to be a part of this great family we have at McGriff Tire.